director of the Trinity Church. It is a real honor to be able to welcome all of my congregation and staff and worshipers who stand with me saying how delighted we are to be in your place. Come together to reflect, to remember, especially to remember. It means a great deal as well to be able to welcome those, those fellow clergy, these the beautiful choir we just heard, those who come to help us remember such important parts of your particular heritage. I'm sure that some here tonight remember that 15 years ago we gathered once here for the 85th commemoration of the Armenian Genocide, and here we are now. Again, until we get together. It means a great deal to us at Trinity Church to have this friendship and closeness with the Armenian community of Greater Boston, a connection that has seen special for over 100 years and one we hope to sustain and nurture as we go forward. We hope you will feel at home in this space here tonight, and if there's any need to have a question, you have there are ample ushers around eager to help you find your way. And following the service, we invite everyone to come downstairs for a reception and our comments, which are just down in the boat. A chance for us to speak to each other, to connect with each other, to remember together, even what this service was all about. So please join us downstairs. To get there, there are, there are staircases in the two corners to make it your way out the doors. And there's also an elevator here for those who need an elevator to go on stage. So we hope very much you'll come and enjoy the seat down there. We're so glad you're with us for what is about to unfold this evening. And we're so glad as well to welcome Maestro Arthur Brandon and the combined Armenian choirs to be with us. And now I would like to invite you to the podium and Anthony Barsanian to you now as the chair of the Massachusetts Community to commemorate the Armenian Genocide. Good evening. On behalf of the Massachusetts Armenian Genocide Centennial Commemorative Committee, its co-chairs, faith leaders, and affiliate organizations, it is my honor to welcome you here at Trinity Church, as we are honored, as we honor the past and pray today. In a century that has given us peace and safe harbor since the 19th century, we express our gratitude to all of you at this congregation. Tonight we pray for our martyrs, those innocent lives who die and are being lifted up tonight as saints in Holy Echmiati. Our mother cathedral in Armenia, we no longer mourn, we pray with them for our salvation. Twelve days ago, we witnessed the Holy Father, Pope Francis, in Rome's name. Concealing or denying evil is like the lava of wounds keeps leaving without damaging. The Holy Father called on heads of state and international organizations to recognize the truth of what transpired and to prevent such wars from repeating themselves and to oppose all such crimes without seeking to ambiguity or compromise. Tonight, for all of you who join us as faith leaders, brothers and sisters, you are bandaging our bleeding wounds. In our meeting, when there is hurt, we say, sometimes, may I take your pain. Tonight, you help take our pain. To our children, I say, let your wounds continue to hurt a bit. Feel the pain of injustice for others. For those less fortunate, then you that cry out for help. Especially for those who still are on that route a hundred years later. Whether Christian, Muslim, Yezdi, Turkish, or Kurd. We remind the world that a crime unpunished will, will be repeated until it is properly accounted for. Tonight we have a student from Gordon College, Anna Karabashi, with us. 
who is a descendant of a war hard gun, survived the Armenian genocide. You will hear more about a war story in the coming year. In 1919, a silent movie was made about her life, and she performed the lead together with Ambassador Henry Horsenthal, the ambassador to the Ottoman Empire, which, is, which established the Near East Relief and raised $20 million for relief efforts for orphans. Today, the Armenian community worldwide is establishing the Aurora Prize in collaboration with George Clooney, Ellie Wiesel, Mayor Robinson of Ireland, Hina Jelani of the UN, and Bartram of Warren. Awarded $1 billion annually to people who put themselves at risk to make an outstanding contribution to humanitarian causes. We, will, we too will join in helping damage the wounds of others. Tomorrow we invite you to join us and our state and federal leaders at the State House and process to Heritage Park on the Rose Kennedy Greenway. Please join us in also paying respect and tribute to the last remaining three survivors that will be with us. All three are over 100 years old. May God bless you all. It is 
participating and a witness to be more committed that we share on this planet Earth for our own the sadness and the pain of our meeting. Therefore, we will begin this commemoration with interfaith meetings. Following those meetings, we'll enter into the Armenian Vesper Service led by Christian leaders from various traditions to honor our brothers and sisters of the Armenian Church. We intend this to be a wider sign, a sign of the wider church, by embracing, we here gather, embracing the Armenian martyrs who today become saints on the holy calendar of the Armenian church. In the midst of this festival service, church leaders will testify as to why the Armenian genocide matters to their own Christian community. And you are welcome to participate or to observe as you are the most comfortable. As a witness to our common humanity, we first now will hear a word from our interfaith neighbors. First by Rabbi Ron Friedman of Temple of Israel, who will be followed by Mary Johnson of the Islamic Society of Boston Cultural Center. Different than choosing their own way of life. 
Many of us are familiar with John the Baptist's life, peace be upon him, of strength in the face of ignorance and the ultimate price he paid. And so we ask ourselves, where is the peace? Where is peace in a violent death? The peace lies in the very fact that we are talking about him now. John the Baptist's life, peace be upon him, is continually blessed when we remember him and reflect on his strength. We shed peace on his life and light on his memory by speaking his name in honor and putting to practice what he talked and how he lived. Now, where is peace? Where is God 100 years ago and all the years after? Where is peace for the Armenian people who suffered and saw the red blood of their loved ones spilled without justice? Where was the peace for the Armenian people who had to cross blue oceans to escape persecution? Slow coming in part one, the Armenian people will be born again to new peace. The peace of knowing that the world speaks your name and remembers. The peace of seeing the genocide of your people turn into a cautionary and much heated tale, saving others from pain. The peace of sharing your sadness and your hope with generations to come. By his grace, God's bright, all-encompassing, pure and yellow light, will come back to the Armenian people. And through our collective memory, we will ensure that their children are born to peace. May God, to whom is due all worship and submission, grant us peace on the day we die, and peace when we are raised to life again. Amen. Here to honor the memory and the lives of the martyrs of the Armenian genocide is the governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Charlie Baker, who will bring a welcome, a word of welcome and of care.
I'm proud that our state continues to stand firm and educates our students and our people about the history of the American genocide, the Armenian genocide, in public schools, through the facing history of curriculum. And we are all certainly hopeful that by learning and educating future generations about these tragic events, and by standing up for those who lost so much, we can ensure that it never happens again. Thank you again for this chance to be here and join with you tonight. Would you please stand and pray with us? Again in peace. Let us beseech the Lord, receive our prayers, raise us to life, and have mercy on us. Blessing and glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and always in the ages of ages. Amen.
remaining seated, we will respond to each verse by saying, Mercy and truth will meet, justice and peace will embrace. Lord, you were pleased with your land, and you overturned the enslavement of Jacob.
other than in Turkish military and paramilitary forces. We remember those who suffered unspeakable atrocities, intentionally inflicted to eliminate the Armenian demographic presence in Turkey. In the process, the population of historic Armenia at the eastern extremity of Anatolia was wiped off the map. With their disappearance, an ancient people which had inhabited the Armenian islands for 3,000 years lost their historic homeland and were forced into exile. The surviving refugees fled throughout the world, eventually settling on all five continents. Triumphant in its total annihilation of the Armenian people and relieved of any obligations to the victims and survivors, those responsible adopted a policy of dismissing the charge of genocide and denying that the deportations and atrocities had constituted part of the deliberate plan of extermination. Turkish entry into World War I facilitated this process. Shamefully, no outside powers intervened on behalf of the victims. Their silence was deafening. Over 2,000 towns and villages were emptied of Armenian inhabitants who were subsequently killed. Some were killed at the outset of the so-called deportation, while others died from disease and malnutrition in concentration camps in the deserts of Zor in Syria. Survivors of those camps were murdered outright at the end of 1916. There were no Armenians left to speak of in what became modern Turkey in 1923. The fate of the Greeks, as you know, was similar. The destination of Greeks living in Pontus on the Black Sea came first, followed by the forced exodus of the remaining Greeks of Asia Minor. Countless were ethnically cleansed their ancestral homeland between 1918 and 1923. The city of Smyrna was torched to force the exodus of both Greek and Armenian populations. Common denominator in the Armenian, Greek, and later Kurdish genocide was the intention to create an exclusively Turkish state with no minority population. The Greek American community of New England feels a special bond with our Armenian brethren, especially those that live in wartime. I commend the Mass Council of Churches and the Armenian community and the interreligious community for organizing this centennial commemoration. The memories of the victims of 1915 was, must never be forgotten, not only by their descendants, but by people of goodwill throughout the world. Every day we learn about people's suffering, and it's easy to become desensitized to the oppression and violence against our fellow human beings, irrespective of racial origin, ethnic background, or religious conviction. What happened in 1915 is being repeated today throughout the Middle East and Africa. We are appalled by the brutality inflicted upon people of every religion. Many turn a blind eye, but we must not remain silent before such ongoing horrific acts of brutality. To do so would be disrespectful to the memory of our Armenian brethren. We must raise our voices in solidarity and prayer. As St. Paul reminds us, if one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. My brothers and sisters in the household of God, we believe that God's appearance as man, as Christ in history, offers all of us the possibility for repentance, reconciliation, and redemption. 
Holy Resurrection is proof of the triumph of good over evil, of hope over despair. The memorial service this evening manifests our belief in the power of truth to change the future. As we respectfully remember our Armenian brethren, let us pray that Almighty God may embrace their souls in His loving bosom, granting them eternal rest. And to Paul, St. Paul, may the Lord of peace himself give all of us peace at all times and in every way. Please stand and pray with us the evening. The response to each is Lord have mercy. For the peace in the whole world and for the stability of the Holy Church, let us ask the Lord. Lord for all holy and martyred bishops and Christian leaders, for the leaders of the church and the interfaith community gathered here this night, let us ask the Lord. For the life of the Catholics of all Armenians, faith, holiness, care and second, for the life of the Catholics of the great house of Cilicia, His Holiness, Alam the First, for the leaders of all churches and for the salvation of the souls, let us ask the Lord. For the teachers of the church, priests, Deacons, altar servers, and all youth called to serve the church. For the unity of the church in Massachusetts, that one day we might be together at a common table. Let us ask the Lord. Lord. For your rulers and God-loving leaders, especially for Charlie and Governor, Elizabeth and Ed, our Senators, Marty, our Mayor, and all entrusted with elected office. For those who serve our country in peace and in war, let us ask the Lord. Lord. For the seasonable weather, gentle rain, abundant crops, for the will and wisdom to steward your precious creation, let us ask the Lord. Lord. For all people of goodwill gathered here tonight, that the light of your countenance shine upon them, let us ask the Lord. Let us commit ourselves and one another to the Almighty Lord God. Have mercy on us, Lord our God, as befits your great mercy. Let us all say together, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. O Lord our God, hear our voices and receive our requests. The lifting up of our hands and the words of our prayers as you sanctify this evening offering that we have prepared as a sweet fragrance 
for your pleasure. Almighty Lord, increase our faith, hope, love, and all manner of generous deeds, so that always leading a devout and disciplined life, day and night, according to your gracious will, we may be privileged to call upon you for our salvation and spiritual life and receive grace and mercy from you. And with gratitude, we will glorify the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and always, and unto the ages of ages. Amen.
We are called by God to enrich our lives by ever widening circles of fellowship and to discover God, certainly God, in those who differ from us and who differ most with us. That prayer is an echo of the words of Dad Hummel who wrote, the only kind of dignity which is genuine is that which will not be diminished by the indifference of others. And also my great prosecutor, Martin Luther King, who said, Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And an individual has not started living until he can rise above the narrow confines of his individualistic concerns to the broader concerns of all humanity. We must live together as brothers and sisters or perish together as fools. In remembering the Armenian martyrs this evening, we witness to the lives of their faith and their faith with us in the one God, the one God of all. This night we are claiming that they are our brothers and sisters, that we share a spiritual DNA with them and their descendants, that their humanity is marked on the chromosomes of our own faith, our own humanity, that the suffering of the martyrs of Armenia is woven into the tapestry of our own souls, and we are diminished as they were, and their deaths are wrapped into the church universal, which is the body of Christ. As John Dunn, an Anglican priest of my tradition, wrote in No Man is an Island, anyone's death diminishes me. This is to say that those who deny what happened to Armenians perpetuate the genocide. And those who are silent or ignored or claim to be ignorant of it are still participating in it. Honoring Armenian brothers and sisters, saints and martyrs, it is this night for us all to take up their hand as we honor them and remember them, lest we forget, for their humanity is tied up in our own humanity. Lest we deny the genocide, but then we deny that we're all created by the same God who calls us to love and to care. By the heritage of these Armenian, Armenian saints, by the suffering that they have suffered since 1915, we must say, as we already know, their God is our God. My God is their God. If we are to take the cane and bind up the wounds of the Armenians, this night, by God who is within me and you, this night, though I stand here as a black woman, I stand here as an Armenian too. United with them by God, in God, with God, and for God. I am an Armenian too. For my people suffer, and just continue to suffer. And in that suffering, we are grafted together. But in the hope and the life that we share, we will be holding light to this world. Together united, as Christians and Jews and Muslims, united together in God, may we live the prayer and the words of what is the Black National Anthem. God of our weary years. God our silent tears. Thou who has brought us thus far on the way, Thou who has by thy might, let us into the light. Keep us forever on
on the path we pray. Bless our feet. Stray from the places our God will be met. Bless our hearts. Drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadow beneath thy hand. May we forever stand true to our God and true to our neighbor.
Quando ti faccia, e da lì mi o se mi dice o mi ha la quanta verità di Dio. La vera di Cristo, e mi ha the colors of the church in Aleppo. The church in Aleppo without the Armenians would be handicapped, would be really suffering because the Armenian people is a violent one. Armenian Christians are very generous in their Christian life also in that profession in life. I will ask the Lord, and I ask to pray with me that the Lord will be ended in Syria as soon as possible, and that the Christian may remain, and among the Christian that the Armenians may remain, and those who have left they come back because we need them there. We need their company. We need their strength. We need their generosity. And we need their courage. May God bless you all. May God bless the Armenian Church all over the world and bless Syria and the Christians in Syria and preserve them and keep them where the church were born 2,000 years ago. The Christians in Syria are the sons of the first Christians. And Syria is a holy land because it is irrigated in the blood millions of martyrs and the last generation of martyrs were the Armenian one at the beginning of the 20th century. God have their souls in the hope in, the, in heaven. You know, everybody knows that the Holy Father has the Africa five several Armenians few days ago, and in Armenia, the Patriarch is celebrating the canonization of, of all the Nafaya Armenia. Today, in Aleppo, in our church, in partnership with the Armenian church, in our church of St. George, more than 2,000 Christians are gathered to pray and to commemorate this very sorrowful day of days of the martyrs of the Armenians. Let us pray the Lord to, that our two bishops kidnapped May the Bishop Johanna and Bishop Boros and that all Christians and Armenians may be preserved and blessed by the Lord. Almighty with the intercession of his mother Mary and all the servants and the Mahkars in the church. God be with you all and keep you forever. And they asked me to say this few words. I hope it. Good evening. I am Archbishop Jean Clement Jean Bart of the Menkai, Catholic of Archdiocese of Aleppo. I bring you blessings and greetings on behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ in Syria and in Aleppo in particular, from Bishop Shahan Sakisyan, my brother and good friend, Archbishop of Aleppo of the Armenia. I live a city in the ruins, as the Armenian Christians 100 years ago, 
and we need support now for vulnerable religious minorities in Syria and Aleppo particularly. We covet you, your prayers, we covet your prayers and solidarity as Christians and other fragile populations, enduring the pull out of the pipe against extremism in Syria. We invite you, we invite you to think about us, we invite you to support us, and we invite your generous contribution to alleviate the suffering of those in Syria. The evening offering will now be received. And thank you very much.
Please stand. Saint Thaddeus and 
Bartholomew, and of the blessed apostles, the saints James, and of St. Gregory the Enlightener, and of St. James, the Bishop of Nicias, Maru the Hermit, Meletius the Bishop, and George the Captain, Lord of the Grand Dust Peace. Loving Lord, through the intercession, memory and prayers of your holy martyrs of 1915, who are being commemorated today, grant us the gift of people and of your great mercy. Let us beseech the Lord through the prayers of the holy martyrs who defeated evil and endured anguish, and who became worthy of the luminous, heavenly, and everlasting crowns. Through their prayers and intercession, may the Lord have mercy on us and raise us to love. Let us say all together, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ our Lord, you crown your saints with triumph, and you do the will of all who hear you, looking after your creatures with love and kindness. Hear us from your holy and heavenly realm by the intercession of the Holy Mother of God, and by the prayers of all your saints, especially the holy martyrs, who gave their lives during the Armenian genocide for faith and for the homeland, whom we commemorate today. Hear us, Lord, and show us your mercy. Forgive, cancel, and pardon our sins. Make us worthy, thankfully, to glorify you with the Father and with the Holy Spirit, now and always, unto the ages of ages. Amen. Please be seated.
proclaim you again, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. To be set free from that which binds us, we must speak the truth. To heal, we must name things for what they are, and so tonight in this church, we cannot help but speak the truth. Jesus knew what it meant to be released from torment. He knew that we needed to call a thing what it is. And as his ministry of healing expands in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus and the disciples travel across the river Jordan to a country of the Gerasenes. And there, there among the tombs in the graveyard, removed from the land of the living, there is a man tormented. The Gospel writer Mark takes pains to describe this tormented man, careful to look His wrists have become bruised and raw where the chains have held him. His shoulder bones pointed under the top tent of his skin. His eyes lie to look upon someone, anyone, who might save him, who might set him free. In polite society, it is awkward to speak seriously about one overtaken by an evil spirit. It's more the stuff of horror films and novels. But our ancient forebearers in Jesus' time lived with a strong belief in unclean spirits, evil powers that can overcome and overtake a person. We know how evil the world is. How can take hold of the people, the nation? We know of an evil so entrenched that we cannot free ourselves. And so the man cries out, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? This truth can set us free. 
Speaking the truth is not simply a political necessity, but we all know that our government needs to speak the truth of the Armenian genocide. Speaking the truth is a historical necessity. It's a moral necessity, a spiritual necessity. His Holiness Herodian II, the second, the supreme patriarch and Catholicos of all Armenians' rights. Our souls resound with a powerful call for justice that will not be silent. And then the Turkish scholar and journalist Cenzid Akhtar wrote, the Armenian genocide is the great catastrophe of Anatolia, the mother of all taboos in this land. Its curse will continue to haunt us as long as we fail to talk about it, as long as we fail to recognize, understand, and recognize it. And so, like the garrison man tormented by that unnamed, unclean spirit, our world will be haunted as long as we fail to name the reckon with this great evil. What we do not name, we risk repeating. We gather tonight to speak truth, to name things for what they are, and perhaps even to be free from that which is tormented. And so, my beloved brothers and sisters, my dear Armenians, you have been carrying this love with me. You have been carrying this truth far too long on your own. The burden has been heavy. Your backs are tired and bent. And your souls have been weighed down. Tonight, the wider church embraces you. Tonight, we draw near to you side by side with you to help shoulder this load, for it is our burden to bear as well as yours. The Armenian genocide was not simply a crime against Armenians, it was a crime against humanity. And so this is ours too. Do you remember the protests, the hundreds of thousands marching in the street in Istanbul after the Armenian journalist Grant Dink was assassinated? Do you remember the signs? The signs saying we are all Armenians. Tonight we are all Armenians. This night, from now on, we all assume the burden to carry with you this history, this suffering, this truth, and this memory, and this story of resurrection. Like Julia Ward Howe, we come not so much to speak as to hear. As the wider church embraces you and your newly sainted martyrs, we vow to listen to you as you speak. You need not remember these martyrs alone. We will stumble in our speech, wrapping our clumsy tongues around names that are unfamiliar. But you will teach us. And together, we will speak the truth. And our God, who desires unity, who desires truth, will be pleased. Over the last century, too many names have been lost. Too many names changed in that desperate hope that maybe a less Armenian sounding name might just save from unspeakable crimes. Too many names of murdered men never carved into a gravestone. Too many names lost somewhere in the parched desert sand as desperate mothers cried in vain out the names of their dying daughters. Too many names. Too many names known to God alone. But tonight, <coughs> this night, the ancestors that you prayed for are now the saints you pray to. We name them truth. 
We name them not just your real mother or your great uncle, but we now name them martyrs and saints. And we speak by your names together. I swear, Sir, now I have a very good one to prepare. The Lord is Amen. Amen.
It was the meaning of the Armenian genocide for the Roman Catholic Church also begins in the sadness. It starts with a recognition, not a comprehension, because no human reflection can encompass the loss involved in the infinity of each human life taken from us in the next return, the great crime. The mystery of evil extends beyond human vision. Where sight fails, we must continue with different eyes, the eyes of faith. And in faith we see how those who have lost are ours forever, because their martyrdom ensures that they await us above in the one place we can never lose our love. The Holy Father Pope Francis has said it was a true martyrdom of your people. And in heaven the Catholic, Orthodox, and Protestant martyrs are already enjoying the full communion we Christians on earth still seek. There is no division among them. Therefore they are saints, not just of some of us, but of all of us. Their Lord is one, their witness is one, their blood is one. Dear brothers and sisters, what can we do to honor them? How do we honor those who endure horrors about which most people do not know? How do we honor the mothers who encounter a modern marriage bent on killing the innocent from whose mouths the voice was heard in Rama? weeping and lamentation. How do we honor the fathers, the elders, the orphans, the children who prefer to lay down and die with their families and forsake them or their faith? We owe them unity to stand as one for their Lord, since the martyrs are like our other brothers and sisters in the Christian family. The first duty we owe to them is to draw the family together. We owe them our witness to stand as one for the message they sealed with the ultimate testament. We owe them our voices to carry on their words and song. This we owe all the martyrs, but to the martyrs of 1915, we also owe the full recognition of the monstrously systematic murder and assassination of identity called genocide. As Pope Francis has said in the third earlier this evening, concealing or denying evil is like allowing a wound to keep bleeding without bandaging it. No more denial. The attempt to take not just evil, but a people, not just individuals, but one of the civilizations of humankind is the Armenian genocide. And we owe it to them to stand against all genocide and crimes against humanity, especially those being perpetrated right now in the same lands against our same faith. Moreover, we owe them all our help in rebuilding the churches and the faith culture and the civilization of Armenia, the first Christian nation since 301 AD, a gift forever to all peoples, but especially a gift to the body of Christ. For your spiritual wealth, for the lived faith of 1700 years, for the wisdom of St. Gregory of Narak, doctor of the Universal Church, your powerful spiritual esteem. Ultimately, the genocide was a failed attempt because we are here to celebrate the living, vibrant, growing heritage of Armenian spirituality, holy tradition, and incarnated faith, which is a treasure for all the Church of Christ everywhere and forever. Sincerely yours,
in San Juan, in Beatrice, where the Lord of the Prince, join us here. On behalf of my clergy brothers and our faithful, I'd like to use this opportunity to present the real view our gratitude of your generosity, your patience, and your continued prayers and support both of us to your home again. I'll open the presents. Father Patrick, who had been removed, he took the Armenian cross of ceramics from Jerusalem. Thank you. Father Samuel. Thank you to your beautiful church, magnificent, let's say, cathedral. Another Armenian cross. Done in Jerusalem, surrounded by many cross. And to our good friend, Reverend Laura, the executive director of the Massachusetts Council, we all call her a good friend of the Armenians. Christ be with you always and forever. 